you know when things are going bad at a club, if I come out and speak out, only I'm going to get the abuse. And I just thought the club were protecting themselves a little bit there. They didn't protect us. Yeah. And, and I've said that before, they didn't protect us because there was, at the end of the day, they, they're thinking about Aston Villa and what's best for them. So we're just players to them and they've got to do what's right for the club, which is fine. But when you contract to, to a team, you think you're going to get a bit more protection? Mika Richards was England's youngest ever defender. He went on to have a, a fabulous career with Manchester City coming out of the academy, 245 appearances. He won an FA Cup. He won a Premier League. Uh, he had four seasons at Aston Villa where he had to retire young uh, due to a knee injury. He now is the second best pundit on TV and radio behind me. This is Sutton's Big Games with Mika Richards. Villa, do you think they've got enough to, to stay up this season or is it going to be a tough one? I think it depends what happens in January. They've got a market now, they've just signed Drinkwater, so he's a good addition in terms of work rate. They need a bit of steel in there. Sometimes the way they play, it leaves itself a little bit open, the way Jack plays and whatnot. Um, I do believe they stay up, but they have to get a striker. They have to get a striker. And you, Imperative. You, yeah, and you, you talked about Grealish. Uh, <laughs> We've you, talked about we Grealish. talked about <laughs> Grealish. Shall we ask that question? How, well, first of all, how highly do you rate him? Do you mean to answer that? Well, yeah, you can, you, can, you can answer that. But, yeah, you know me. I, only because I've worked hand in hand. In it. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it about a player if I'm not trained with him. You know what I mean? But because I've worked hand in hand with him and I've seen what he's done to players in training, um, a lot of people, he, he was a, could have been in the Premier League beforehand and people didn't see it that much because he was quite young. I knew that he, in the right team on the right stage, he can do it to anyone. And he's showing that now in a, in a struggling side at Aston Villa. And it's, it's, it's petty, this Greenwich <laughs> Madison thing, yeah. isn't it? Who's, who's the best? Who would you take? Who would you take at this moment in time? You know what? Um, so petty, isn't it? <laughs> it is petty. You know what? Madison adds just a tad more because of his set pieces. Like when I, when I said he only uh, gets more assists because of his set pieces, I didn't know how good his set pieces were. And I downplayed him a little bit on that. And the, on, the only sort of argument I had is Madison's in a better team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're getting to see more of his ability, you know what I mean? Whereas. Half the time, Jack's going to have to get the ball from his own half and dribble past three players and get a foul. He's had the most fouls against him again this season. So, you know You're what I mean? Up, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I mean, we, we have a, sort of an interesting sort of to and fro when, when, uh, when Grealish scores. <laughs> but every time, every time he scores, Madison scores as well. So, if Grealish scores again next time, I'm not going to mention anything until after the game. And every time it seems to happen, I think. They're both incredible, though, yeah. aren't they? In terms of talent-wise and what England need, yeah. I think they're sim different. They're similar but different in terms of both want to create things. Jack's more of a dribbler. I think um, Madison's more of a one-touch, like sharper. You know, he's more effective in front of goal. I would say, and he probably creates a little bit more in terms of final pass. Yeah, I'm sort of still just Madison. So, yeah, he's just, he's just, he's just, he's just coming. Yeah, he's just yeah. coming up. Um, but both, yeah, both incredible. We need something on the English side, don't we? Yeah. We do. You've signed for, for Villa. Yes. A big club. Massive, massive, Ex massive Expectations club. going in there on, uh, for yourself, Ye for the club? You know what it was? It was Tim Sherwood was calling me while I was at uh, from. Uh, used to from clean Tina. his boots, Tim, at Norwich, I did. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, he used to. Used to. Nice guy, though. Yeah, good, good player he was, yeah. When they was calling I was like yes I, I don't even need to uh, financials or whatever I'm going I'm coming back Villa I'm, I'm, I was back in Leeds lad but I was born in Birmingham all my family live in Birmingham and all my family live in Leeds so I was like it's perfect um, so negotiation he rang me he was like yeah I'll, I'll come he said we'll sort it out in the summer no problem expectations were, were massive but um, I spoke to Delph Fabian Delph he, he told me he was staying. He wasn't unsure about Benteke, but I thought, you know, 
me with half decent name. If I come in, it like you know, you know that the good players wanna wanna stay. A week after I signed there, Benteke's gone. Two weeks after I signed there, Delph's gone. And they've took the spine out of the team. So I'm thinking, hold on a minute. I've just committed, you know, four minutes, four years of my life, expecting us to give it a right good go in the Premier League. And I've sold it, the, the two best players. Vla, Ron Vla as well, gone. I know he was on a free contract and he, he had a few injury issues and whatnot, but the spine of the whole team had gone, been ripped You've, you've gone in there with ambition. 100%. And, and then within a short but, space but of time. But fair to, to Tim, he, he fought the same as well. He, he you know, we, and it's not that we didn't have ambition because if you look at, we signed, what, 11 players that, that summer, but in experience in the Premier League, if you, why would you not keep Ben Decky, Delph, uh, you know, put myself in there with my experience, you know, and, and build around that. But for some reason, they wanted to, to sell these players. And, I, and at the time, and I don't really like going into finances, but if Villa would have played Fabian Delph, whatever it was, just a little bit more, he did not want to leave. He did not want to leave, but he just wanted to be sorted, paid for, for his value at the time. He did not want to leave Aston Villa. And he told me that in the conversation I had with him. And, uh, and so your time at Villa on the pitch was a frustration then in, in terms of you, you'd had the success at City and your challenge, you, 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 you're going in, it's not what it said on the tin because they'd, 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 they'd sold the players. But then talk us through you know, your injuries because this, you know, it, it must have started to, to become a concern and great on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind talking about it at all. You know, my first interview, after I finished, I come out and apologise to, to the Villa fans for not sort of coming out and speaking about it and letting people know what the situation was. But I didn't why, come out. Why, why didn't you actively do that? Because though? the first season was going for relegation battle. The second season, we was trying to sort of. I was still trying to get fit after the injury, so I didn't want to come out until I was fit. And then new managers were changing. Then the third season, we had sort of that financial sort of takeover coming, and then. Four season got back to, to, the, to, the, to the Premier League. Um, and I should have, but I, I didn't want it to be about me. Do you know what I mean? Um, a lot of Villa fans don't know. Season when we went down on transfer deadline day, I had a greed deal with, with West Ham to take me on loan for a year. If I played X amount of games, then they'd sign me. Right. Uh, I had Sunderland as well at the time. Probably um, dodged a bullet there. Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. Uh, and then the window after I had Orlando all prepared to take me off the wage bill and Villa would not sell me. It said me too vital in the changing room um, to let go. So I'm like, well, why, why is no one saying this? Do you know what I mean? Why is no one saying Because you know when things are going bad at a club, if I come out and speak out, only I'm going to get the abuse. And I just thought the club were protecting themselves a little bit there. Do you know what I mean? Well, these players are getting a lot of stick. Um, I didn't say they hung us out to dry, but they didn't. They didn't, it's a didn't disappointment. They didn't protect us. Yeah. And, and I've said that before. They didn't protect us because there was. At the end of the day, they they're thinking about Aston Villa and what's best for them. So we're just players to them, and they've got to do what's right for the club, which is fine. But when you contract to, to a team, you think you're going to get a bit more protection. The only way. The only one, Bruce, when he came in, tried to help me out a little bit. And then Dean Smith at the end was, was, was fantastic with me. But going, going, going through that, like from being a Premier League winner and then to getting beat every single week, honestly, I couldn't believe it. I actually, even when we were struggling with City at the start, it was never that. We always knew we was, we'd have fight and we'd stay in the league. I thought, when we sold Delph, I was worried, but I didn't think we'd get relegated. Was that your hardest time? In your career at Villa? Yeah, because just because of the abuse, tw tw you know, Twitter, Instagram, it was every single week, go to the to the home games, getting booed on the tannoy before did, the game. Did that affect you? You know what, it didn't affect me too much. It affects sort of the people around you, you know, your family. Yeah. The only thing that affected me was not being able to get over my injury and it, like it was just reoccurring. And you know, you know what it's like with injuries, you just when you think you, you, you're there, and then something happens. He just plays with your mind. And that's when it was like mentally, it was, it was mental torture. Like thinking that you're going to be fit, thinking you're going to be fit. And then last minute, 
your knee just swells up and it's like how, how what are you supposed to do and then and then the you know you're not training uh you're playing you you you're putting yourself into situations and you know I had injuries as well uh you know and I played but training was always important to me and then you're going out and you're actually putting and you're talking about how hard it was at Villa at the time you're putting your neck on the block when yes. you're not in the best physical condition My and people don't really understand that and respect that and give you credit for yeah, that yeah exactly i was having you're supposed to take, you know, two volta rolls, 275 a day. It's 150 max. I was taking four. After training, I, won't, I'll, I had a kit where I was draining fluid out my knee. Just so I was fit enough to be ava you know, available for, for selection because I just felt like I, I wanted to, to try help. Do you know what I mean? And like, you only get one shot at this and People don't see behind the scenes. I wish, I, you know, I wish I would have videoed all this stuff to, so that people could actually see. You know, it's not, it's not fiction. It's actually facts. You know what I mean? Do, I do you having, regret doing that now, though? For, for your, you know, your, your no, long term. No, I don't regret doing it because but you're, you're, it's all, it's all I know. Football, you know, like I'm, I'm quite weird sometimes because mentally, if I got something in my mind, I'll just do it. I push myself to the level that I could. That, that, and I just think with, with football, like, I, I've always loved it. And it, I only know, I knew my career was coming to an end soon. So I was like, I'm going to do as much as I can to get as on the field as many times as I can. But why should, why should, I'd argue, why should you be putting yourself in a situation, eye after training, draining your knee, when, when you know you're probably shortening your career by doing that? Aren't you? Yeah, I'm definitely shortening, but I think at that time the sort of club had made their mind up and it was just more of like a personal challenge to myself to show people that I can go out there and still do it, you know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, looking back it was stupid, it was wrong. I was literally, my stomach was on fire every single day because of my, the, the vault rolls that I was taking, but I just wanted to prove myself that I could, I could get out, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's a lonely place out there and you, the things that you do for football, it's, it, it's crazy. Like, um, and there's a lot of people like say, love football and all that. I genuinely love football, do you know what I mean? And I was like, that's why I'm so passionate about it, talking about it, because it, like, it's all I've grew up on, you know what I mean? I was like, well, you only get one, I'm from Chapel Town, which is half an hour down the road. And People don't get opportunities there, and if they do get opportunities, they're normally thrown away. Do you know what I mean? So for me, it's always just about the back of the mind. If you've got an opportunity, make sure you're the most you can do. On this occasion, I went too far, 100%, but it's always just been the sort of ingrained into me. If you get opportunity, make sure you're willing to go as far as you, you can to, to, to achieve.